Hey, welcome back, everyone. This episode, I want to just very quickly summarize what happens in a decomposition reactions. Remember, that is one of our class of reactions. And so this is, this is essentially sort of the reverse process of a synthesis or combination reaction. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you remember correctly. So let's just let's just jump in and start taking a look at some classic e examples or <clears throat> um, just some uh, different elements of uh, and what, what I mean by elements is different elements, different aspects, different characteristics of different types of decomposition reactions. Because different types of things will break down, which will yield differing types of products. So. We have decompositions uh, where we have a binary compound, all right? And so by a binary compound, we mean something like, um, so remember, we, <clears throat> binary compound, we've got a metal plus a non-metal. So you remember that that's like our, our cation and our anion, correct? So, well, if, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to just use X to represent the metal, the cation, because it doesn't it doesn't matter which which type, um, which metal would be uh, in the compound. If it's going to break down in this way, if it's a binary compound, it'll still follow this same concept. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So let's just say we have a particular chloride compound, right? And so. Um, and I'm just, I'm just making something up here. We'll make up something where we know the charge on the cation might be a positive two. All right. So, uh, we'll go with this. We know it's break, it's going to break down. There'll usually be some sort of catalyst. Oftentimes it could be, uh, heat. Uh, it could be, uh, depending on what it is, it could be, uh, electricity. If we're dealing with a biological, a breakdown of a, uh, something that's biological, uh, it, there could be an enzyme here. You know, this isn't biological, but it could be a component of it in some way, shape, or form. What's going to happen is, is they're literally going to break apart right there. We're going to end up getting the cation and the anion that are going to separate. And you'll remember that chlorine is one of those molecules that forms diatomic molecules. So we would see something like this. So we would see a gas evolve off of something like this, and then of course we would get our our metal uh, that would <clears throat> form from this. Our you know our our more uh, more of our pure substance, so to speak. And the more pure, pure it would be, would be dependent upon what our percent yield is, right? So that's that that is essentially what happens with the breakdown of a binary compound. All right. So now let's go ahead and. To erase all of this, let's take a look. Let's take a look at another particular type. We're going to look at. Uh, let's go with uh, carbonates. All right. So if you look up uh, a carbonate, um, remember carbonates. We're dealing with CO three two minus. Those are the anions that we're. We're working with, right? So once again, we'll use X to represent the cation that is combined with our our carbonate, all right? And so it's gonna depending on the subscript, uh, depending on the oxidation charge of the cation depends on if there will or will not be a subscript present there, right? So I'm just this is just a general overview. Once again, there could be heat or electricity, whatever it is, is breaking it down. And then you're always going to get so think about it. This way, you, you can you see here CO3, and, and one of the first things that y when you look at this, it's easy to do a double take and sort of see that CO2 is there. Well, if, if so, if we were to if we were to break this down into that, then that means we can visualize that there's still an extra oxygen. So we would get some s carbon dioxide gas that would evolve in this process, and then we can see that we would have the metal cation and this oxygen that would combine. And of course, the subscripts would be dependent upon the, the charges on both the cation. And of course, the anion here being oxygen, we know would be you know, a negative two. And so that would have an effect. And so 
there is our basic concept of what happens when we have carbonates. All right. Let's take a look at another class of decomposition reactions. All right. And you'll be doing, you know, decomp decomposition reaction in lab. Depending on the time we have, we may do different types, different classes of them. Um, so the one we've got is, it's, it, it's a kind of a fun one. So there are, for instance, things like chlorates, all right? And so, if, again, and if you ever forget this stuff, you just go to your chemical equation sheet, right? And then you find chlorates, and so, you know, you can see the chlorate right there. So, but if you ever forget these things, remember, I've always given, I've given you a good reference sheet to find all this stuff. So right there you see chlorate ClO3 negative, right? So we're going to come back here and we realize that we've got ClO3 negative. So again, we've got our cation that is combining with our chlorate. And here we you see that we have essentially what looks like two anions. Both these anions by themselves, we would call them anions. Together, right now, we're, this is a polyatomic ion. So these two anions basically break apart, and they separate into, oh, I'm sorry, into their, into their components. So now if we think about this, if we take the, if we just look at the chloride itself breaking down, the oxygen is separating out, and that oxygen gas is going to evolve very quickly in this reaction. So now we're going to be, what's going to happen though, is once that happens, now we've still got this anion here, and whatever metal cation that we had, and so you're going to be left with that metal cation and your your chlorine, and they're going to end up combining, and that's going to be your your new substance. All right. So there's chlorates. Um, let's let's look at another class of these. Erase that. Again, I highly encourage you to pause, rewind, take notes, go back and forth. Um, look at this multiple times. So then we get down to the some classic acid and base reactions. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go with a base, just to stick with a theme that we've got where we where we're dealing with a metal. So we if, if we have a base, typically what that means is we will see uh, we we've got uh, hydroxide ions there. So once again, if we've got a metal cation and our hydroxide anion, then there is our base. And depending on the oxidation charges, depends on what happens. All right. So we can we can see, oops, sorry about that. So we can see that if we've got this, that just sort of breaks down a little bit right there. The so the way I like to try to think about it is if you do this, you can see that those, the, the, those that cation and that particular anion closest to each other, they're going to bond, they're, they're going to bond together. All right. So that kind of makes, that kind of makes some sense. All right. Because the metal and the hydrogen typically are not. Now there are compounds where you get what are called metal hydrides, but that is something completely different. That is not this. With what you know in chemistry at this level, it makes sense that you would have a positive cation and a negative anion. So that makes sense that we would have our metal and our non-metal chemically combining together. Now, when you have a base, remember acid-base reactions always breaks down into salt and water. And so you just have to remember, if you remember that, then you'll know that water is going to form, and of course, you know that would be, you know, liquid water, right? Liquid phase water, right? All right. So there you go. There's there's our base. So now, conversely, let's take a look. Let's 
take a look if we're working with an acid. So remember, acids have a greater concentration of hydrogen ions, right? So our hydrogen ion in this case um, is we. It's hard it, hard to think about it as uh, as a cation, even though it behaves like a cation at times. It does. So you're going to you, since you're dealing with an acid, it's always a given, just like with acid base reactions. Oops, not yeah. That you'll get liquid that will that will evolve off of the reaction. You're going to. Your hydrogen is then added to some, is then combined with some sort of anion. And that anion, your anion um, is like this negative part. All right, so I'm just writing a capital A to represent a negative part. There is another way to write this, but right now this concept, this concept works. So your once this breaks up, like for instance, let's say we had, we had, I don't know, nitric acid, right? So you can see that, you know, there's your positive and then there's your negative component. Well, the negative component, you're going to get water forming. This negative uh, anion, what is currently behaving like an anion, it has really nothing else to attach to. It has no metal anion uh, to chemically bond with. Water is forming. And so the way I like to re think of this is, is that there's, no, there's, there's really not much hydrogen remaining. Because if, if it were to rebond with hydrogen, then there would be no reaction. Like, for instance, our example here, I mean, our example here was like nitric acid breaking down if if this is the positive component and this is the negative component and it makes no sense that they would recombine over here that makes absolutely no sense right so what happens is there's some new uh, mo new molecular compound that is formed. All right, remember, a molecular compound means it's all non-metal elements, right? And so in a situation, so that means that that's where you get into your different naming system where like, you know, you know water is dihydrogen monoxide, right? So in a situation like this, you would get something like dinitrogen tetraoxide, all right? So you would get a you would get a new form of the anion in a molecular compound uh, kind of uh, form, uh, for lack of better words. I hate to use the same word twice, but essentially that's what that's what's it. When it comes to something like this, there's more chemistry that we would have to know because depending on the acid, depending on the conditions, depends on which uh, molecular compound can form. So if, we, if we're working with something like this, when we do, uh, there'll be more information and, and a further lesson that will help us sort of determine exactly what that molecular compound would be, okay? But essentially, you get a new, a, a new molecular compound, right? And then you get your water, all right. And and then I mean those are mostly it. And there's some you know there's some there's some other things as well. For instance, um, let me use the larger one here, right? So you know in lab we've done things with bicarbonate, right? So and when we when we did uh, lab work with bicarbonate and we had some sort of uh, uh, a metal with our with our bicarbonate, right? Our hydrogen carbonate. We saw that water and CO two were products. Plus, we had some sort of um, we had we had some sort of product that ended up being basically like a 
binary compound. It was it was ionic. All right, and so th that 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 happens to a degree. Now, in a situation like this, though, I mean, where's my eraser? I always forget where my eraser is. In a situation like this, I mean, if you if if you break it down too far, it is possible that you that you can get some of that to occur. But what's usually going to happen is is you're going to go from a bicarbonate to a carbonate, typically. And then that carbonate can be broken down a little bit further with extra heat. All right, well, there's my reminder that I've got office hours coming up shortly. So this will be a good time to end the video. This is this is great. I got 10 minutes before I have to log in and have office hours with my virtual classes. So um, yeah, let's just go ahead and end that here. Take these notes. Uh, make sure you understand these very well. And I've got plenty of practice problems out there for you to help you with this. Just remember, law of conservation of mass. If it doesn't balance on both sides, and if your math doesn't, if your mass mass computations, the stoichiometry, if it doesn't balance out on both sides, reacting product, then you know something is wrong with your decomp reaction, that you've got one or more products written incorrectly, and or you may have written the reactant incorrectly. All right. So you just have to go back and double check that each step of the way. Each one wherever you make your error in any of those, then there's always going to be a mathematical error from any point uh, forward at, from then on, okay? All right, always good learning with you. Uh, I will see you in class or I'll see you in another video. Stay curious and I will see you really, really soon.